Have you ever wondered what the most famous German generals thought about the Waffen-SS? How was the relationship between the German regular army and this German elite troop led by Himmler? This series of questions are questions that many World War II fans ask themselves, and finally in this program, we are going to answer them. To do this, we have collected opinions from characters such as Erwin Rommel, Guderian, or von Manstein, and many others from soldiers who are not known. Before beginning to analyze the opinions of these senior officers, let's see what, at a general level, the troops of the German regular army thought about the Waffen-SS. The first factor is that they considered that there was favoritism and that the Waffen-SS had preferential treatment in terms of resources and personnel. This made them receive better material than the rest of the normal units, in addition to receiving it in a much shorter time. This situation could lead to some resentment if a regular army unit was close to another Waffen-SS unit on the same front, and felt that it was being discriminated against. Another factor that did not go unnoticed was the ideological character of the Waffen-SS soldiers, which was strongly marked. As a crude summary, while the soldiers of the German army were fighting for their country, the soldiers of the Waffen-SS were fighting for their country and for the National Socialist Party. This characteristic led many to see the Waffen-SS as a unit of fanatics in which the most important thing was loyalty to the Führer, and not professionalism as a soldier. Thus, this way of seeing things led many to despise these supposed elite units, which they considered unprofessional and therefore wasteful of the material with which they were provided. After this initial presentation to put ourselves in the situation, let's see some of the opinions and actions of the great generals and marshals of the German army on the Waffen-SS. First of all, let's start with Rommel. As you know, the then Colonel Erwin Rommel met Hitler after being chosen to take charge of his security during the campaign in Poland. Although those in charge of the Führer's security were the SS, Rommel took away that privilege and did not use any of his members to protect Hitler while he was in this position. The truth is that Rommel had a very low opinion of the SS, and he always showed his rejection of this body. Later when he had direct command of troops either in France in 1940 or in the African theater, Rommel refused to lead any Waffen SS troops, going so far as to state that the professionalism of the SS was less than that of the regular army. Thus, more than a military unit, Rommel considered the Waffen SS as a political unit. We do not know if Rommel changed his mind during the last months of the war, in which he did have many Waffen SS units under his command in Normandy. What we do know is that he never allowed his son to join the Waffen SS, and he was denying his entry until the end of his days. The following much more favorable opinion corresponds to Heinz Guderian, this being one of the fathers of the currently known lightning war in the Panzerwaffe. Unlike Rommel, Guderian said many of the Waffen-SS divisions were extraordinary units, with discipline and combat effectiveness hard to beat. Due to the fact that in most cases these divisions were the ones in charge of leading the offensives or counterattacks, Guderian considered them as a very valuable asset on the battlefield. At this point, it should be noted that divisions such as the Leibstandard, Das Reich or Totenkampf led most of the German offensives and counteroffensives from the beginning of 1943 until the end of the war, and with these words Guderian is recognizing these actions. Despite everything and in the same way as Rommel, Guderian also criticized his ideological component and training instead of using said time for better military training. On the other hand, Guderian is critical of other units belonging to the SS, which committed excesses in the territory that the Germans had occupied. The third opinion that we are going to see of another of the heavyweights of the Wehrmacht is that of von Manstein, who had numerous units of the Waffen SS under his command, including the 2nd SS Panzer Corps during the Battle of Kursk. In the same way as the generals we have just seen, Manstein also criticized a lot in his memoirs the strong ideological character of these units, and criticized the fact that many of his commands were promoted for political reasons instead of for military merit. On the other hand, Manstein knew how to obtain the maximum possible performance from these units, and he used them both in his Kharkov counteroffensive in February 1943, and in the spearhead of his attack on Kursk. 
So although he would have preferred these elite units to have been part of the German regular army, Manstein was very proud of them, and they were exactly the type of divisions he needed to carry out his maneuver warfare. On a certain occasion in early 1945, Guderian told Hitler that he had to call Manstein back to give him a new position of responsibility on one of the combat fronts. The German leader's response was that Manstein needed fresh and powerful divisions to operate on the battlefield, and that with what they currently had he could do nothing. In this way, we see how even though Manstein did not approve of certain policies or behaviors of these units, they were very necessary for him. Finally, one of the main problems that Manstein had was the following. In the same way that years ago he had spent with the SA, whose intention had been to become the official army of the Third Reich, senior officers like Manstein were reluctant to allow the same thing to happen little by little with the SS. After having seen the opinion of these three senior officers, let us now move on to analyze other aspects that greatly influenced the relationship between these well-differentiated units that were part of the same army. As we have indicated previously, Although many soldiers of the German army could feel a certain envy when they saw that many Waffen SS units could be better equipped than they were, this soon disappeared. And it is that removing some specific propaganda element, the units that received the best equipment were those that were going to be sent to combat in the most critical place on the front, being this therefore the one that these Waffen SS units used to go to. Thus, although they could envy the priority they had when it came to receiving weapons, they could never envy the fate and task of these divisions, whose casualty rate in each of the operations in which they participated was very high. Both Otto Carius and many other German soldiers left testimony similar to this one that we are going to present below from an anonymous soldier. During the heavy fighting on the Eastern Front, we were often forced to withdraw. Often we found ourselves outnumbered and outgunned. In such dire situations, Waffen SS units would often arrive as a much needed reinforcement, and their skill and determination allowed other units to fall back. Many times they were used as bait to draw forward Soviet divisions away from us, and they suffered very high casualties. His determination and courage were contagious and inspired us to continue fighting in the most unfavorable situations. Furthermore, when it came to attacking, they were always located at the spearhead, and were in charge of penetrating the enemy's defensive lines. One last striking aspect is that as the war progressed, the units belonging to the Waffen SS became more and more numerous, having more and more prominence. Although at the beginning of the war it had been the Waffen SS units that were subordinated to the regular army, at the end of the war it was the other way around. Due to the bad situation, the German leaders came to the conclusion that the only thing that could save the Third Reich was the ideological component of those last soldiers, who had to fight until the end with the greatest possible tenacity. Thus, and although by the year 1945 there were many different units that fought for the same flag and the same country, the camaraderie between them was the general norm. Well, what do you think of the opinions of characters like Rommel, Guderian, or Manstein on the Waffen SS? Do you share them? Do you think they are justified? If you want to expand more on this matter, I leave you in the description the program that we did with Carlos Caballero Jurado on the Live Standard Division, in which we analyze all these sociological aspects. Thank you all so much for being part of this community, especially the sponsors who make this possible. Subscribe and share this program if you liked it, and see you as always every Wednesday and Sunday, see you soon.